Okay, so good afternoon and good evening everyone and uh, welcome you all back again to the 26th session of the online Optom learning series. Let's get started. So today we have with us Optom Neha Chaurasia. Uh, she has finished her bachelor's of optometry from the Lotus College of Optometry, Mumbai, India. And she has pursued her master's in optometry at Chitkara University, Punjab. Currently, she is also pursuing her PhD uh, from the university in South Africa, and she is working as an optometrist trainer at Lenscard. Uh, today, she will share her views about low vision evaluation and how do we practice low vision in an optometry setup. So, go ahead, Neha. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dinsa. Uh, hello, everybody. A very good afternoon. So today I'm going to talk on low vision care in optometric practice. So let me start with a question to all of you. Which is the first thing which pops up in your mind when you first hear the term low vision? You can write your answers in the chat box and Fakrudin sir, you can help me out with the answers shared. Yeah, we would. I'm just waiting for some comments to come in. Yeah. So we would request uh, everyone to just put in your thoughts. Uh, the question is, what is the first thing which pops up into your mind when you hear the term low vision? So we just basically want to know uh, your views on what is the first thing which pops up into your mind when you hear the term low vision. So there are a couple of questions. I'll just read it out for you. Uh, yeah. People say low vision is less vision. It yeah. means uh, reduced field of vision with reduced visual acuity. Great. Yes. Anything that is difficult for operating daily activities. Yeah. yeah different mode of refraction. Yeah, this is something interesting. Uh, yeah. It means a patient having visual acuity less than 618 in the better seeing eye with possible every possible correction yeah uh, low vision means uh, vision which is lower than required irritated person okay interesting okay. again uh, okay i'll wait for a few more comments and then we we'll, uh, i'll reveal the answers okay so let me just read some more for you Opportunity yeah. to apply my optometry skills to help patient participation or get better in his daily activities. Okay, that's okay. quite nice. Yeah. Vision impairment which cannot be improved post-surgery. Yes. A person who has less ability to see clearly and less field compared to normal person. So I think, yeah, these are all yeah. the thoughts. 10 degree visual field. Yeah. Great. So uh, I'm happy to know that most of us are uh, know about low vision and um, and basic information is available to all of us. So yes, uh, you all are right. Low vision. Whenever we hear the term low vision, the first thing which po pops up may be a patient, an eye condition, followed by less vision. Yes, low vision is basically less vision due to an eye condition. So in today's class, we'll have and better understanding of the principle of low vision assessment, understanding the impact of sight loss on activities of daily living, understanding the basic principle of low vision aids, including non-optical devices and non-optical aids, and primary level of care of low vision in our own practices. So let us now understand why low vision. According to WHO report in the year 2010, which states that almost 285 million people across globe are visually impaired of which 39 million are blind and 246 million are are fall into the category of low vision so this the visual impairment is distributed across the countries more prevalent in developing countries like india and china and less prevalent in developed worlds like america and europe 
However, no country is spared. Prevalence of visual impairment is higher in older age group compared to the younger population. Almost 50% of visually impaired individuals are in the age group of 50 years and above. You can see the data here. This 186 million people are visually impaired in the age group of 50 years and above. So what are the leading causes of low vision or visual impairment? It is basically cataract and uncorrected refractive error followed by other diseases. What if, if these visual impairment are not addressed? They will have a possible threat in the future. So the possible threats for future are rise in the genetic population it's, which is expected to increase at the rate of 20%. Diabetes is already going, growing at the rate of 195%. 153 million people over the age of 5 years are already visually impaired due to uncorrected refractive errors, of which 8 million are blind. 50% of world population is becoming myopic. So now, we, now that we know about the threats, what is it which is stopping us to reach these patients? There are possible barriers of low vision. The barriers are found to the main barriers are lack of training and training institute, lack of knowledge. A study was done in India where a survey on low vision awareness was conducted among the ophthalmologists, where 150 ophthalmologists were approached, out of which only 75 agreed to participate in the study. Others denied to participate, stating that. They are not aware of the subject. So lack of knowledge about the subject among the eye care, prof eye care professionals like ophthalmologists and even the optometrists. Third is non-availability of low vision aids. Uh, today, if I want a pair of glasses, I know from where to recruit from. But if I require a low vision aid, I still have to wonder from where to get it. Right. Then we have, if, if you can see clearly in this picture, an expert is advising the president of America about the COVID-19 pandemic. But the president has his own opinion. And we all know what are the results, right? So this is a state of denial, knowing the problem, but not accepting it. So many patients, even the doctors, know that these patients might have low vision, but they refuse to accept about the condition or the visual impairment or low vision. So now that we know there are possible barriers, there are ways to approach or to correct these barriers. In, correct these. So the, follow, the following are, I'm going to explain about some important terms in uh, low vision, that is visual impairment. So visual impairment is also known as vision loss, which is a decreased ability to see to a degree that causes problems which is not fixable by visual means such as glasses or contact lenses. Now, as you can see in this image, this is a normal sighted person image view, view by a normal sighted person. And this shows a view by a glaucoma patient. Like he has peripheral field defect with a central clear vision. Any amount of contact lenses or glasses will not help in connecting the field which he has lost. This is called visual impairment. Visual impairment is a total number of blind plus low vision. Now that we have understood visual impairment, let us understand what is low vision. A person with low vision is one who has impairment of visual functioning even after treatment and or standard refractive correction and has a visual acuity by 18 to limit perception or a visual field of less than 10 degrees from the point of fixation, but who uses or is potentially able to use vision for planning and or execution of a task. This is a definition given by WHO in the year 1992. To keep it simple, low vision is nothing but a functional visual impairment, which is not correctable by standard glasses, contact lenses, medicine or surgery, and which interferes with the person's ability to perform everyday activities. So basically, we know that low vision is basically functional vision impairment. So functional vision impair impairment refers to a significant reduction of visual capability resulting from some pathological conditions that cannot be corrected or treated, which finally results in reduction of visual functions like reduced contrast sensitivity, inadequate visual field, insufficient visual resolution or visual acuity. 
so how now that we know the correct definition of low vision and we can identify a low vision patient how we assess them and how we manage these patients so the assessment of low vision include three important aspects these are clinical evaluation functional evaluation and finally the management clinical evaluation is basically understanding the cause of low vision so the leading causes of low vision in adults are found to be retinitis pigmentosa age related macular degeneration diabetic retinopathy and myopic degeneration that is in children the leading causes are found to be heteromacular degeneration also called as hmd retinopathy of prematurity rop albinism and syndromes there are many other leading causes there are many other causes however these are the leading ones now that we know the cause these causes these causes of low vision do affect the functionality of an individual so functionality functional visual deficit can be can be corrected or we have the approach to functional visual deficit to, for these low vision patient is divided into three broad category one is your cloudy media central field defect and the peripheral field defect cloudy media here means the overall blurred vision which occurs due to conditions such as diabetic retinopathy corneal opacities and others central field defect is the underlying uh, symptoms or underlying sign of a disease of a macular lesions like armd macular degenerations hyaluromacular degeneration and others and then we have peripheral field defects due to glaucoma and retinitis pigmentosa so very first step in approaching these low vision patient is observation and a complete detailed history observation starts in the waiting area start observing the patients and how you know how the behave how the patient is behaving in the waiting area if you are giving them to fill up a form whether they are able to fill that form themselves or they require help how they walk into your clinic are they walking into the clinic independently or they need an escort or they need some help or are, are they bumping into objects so these observations will actually lead to a conclusion what conclusion is basically the patient might have some mobility issues or some field restrictions so this is one thing which you need to observe in a patient then comes a detailed history we must have taken a lot many histories in decades you know ophthalmic history but low vision history is a little different it includes a detailed demographic history along with some task specific history what in demography so demographic history we usually ask about age contact details and so on but here we need to even mention about some additional informations like family members the whom is who with whom the patient is accompanied with like uh, you know if they are accompanied with their uh, immediate guardians or somebody unknown uh, residential information residential information includes uh, you need to ask them whether they have to climb up the stairs to reach to their place or they have a lift facility in their house then task specific history we need to ask them about their daily living activities for distance intermediate and near it is usually observed these patients have difficulties in performing routine day to day activities such as watching television seeing wall clock seeing bus numbers seeing train indicators uh, intermediate tasks like chopping vegetables doing household chores uh, identification of currency notes and coins needling identification of food on the food plate having difficulty doing computer task or intermediate task particularly having difficulty reading out in the product details having difficulty viewing their mobile phone screen and operating mobile phones and finally having difficulty reading newspapers so these are the common ones followed by some very uh, some other uh, difficulty day to day activities like you know seeing uh, identification of traffic signals which leads to a lot of road, road traffic accidents uh, contrast sensitivity function or glare problem like uh, a lot of sensitivity increased sensitivity to light difficulty in crossing roads difficulty in climbing up and down the stairs so these are the most common uh, day to day activities trouble what these patients do feel so now that we know about their level of difficulties we need to have a correct 
assessment or evaluation of these patients. So evaluation or assessment of low vision is divided into two parts, the quantitative part and the qualitative part. So quantitative part or quantitative assessment includes visual acuity, whereas the qualitative assessment includes the functional vision assessment, which includes contrast te testing, glare testing, field testing, color vision, binocularity, and mobility testing. So visual acuity. Uh, usually we use the norm, normal Snellen chart to, to record visual acuity of an individual. But in low vision cases, particularly, the recommended is log mark. The gold standard for visual acuity testing is belly lobby uh, logma chart and ETDRS chart. For neovision, for recording neovisual acuity, we do have a number of charts, but the commonly used for low vision patients is the word reading chart, followed by refraction. Now, refraction in low vision patients plays a very important role. It is the key factor in deciding what low vision aid we are giving, we are going to give it to the customer or prescribe to the customer or patient. Uh, so it has to be performed with retinoscopy instead of auto refractors. So why no, not auto refractors can be used here. As we know, a lot of low vision patients do have media opacities and they might not give a clear or a clear image on the auto refractor. The values will, will, not be, will not be able to receive a correct value or there will be no target on the auto refractor. So it is important to have a great retinoscopy skill for these patients. I, I must tell you, as per my experience, 80 to 90% of your problem will be solved if you have a great retinoscopy skill. Usually, uh, the use retinoscopy skill is is basically we use a radical retinoscopy wherein we go close to detect or uh, close to uh, where we have a close walking distance uh, like 10 centimeters so to have to get the proper glow and proper reflex then we need to give uh, we need to correct them giving a proper objective uh, subjective correction uh, so here the technique uses just noticeable difference has to be given remember the aim is to improve the quality of vision now your objective refraction is performed using the bracketing technique. The tip on how to bracket and start your refraction is to use just noticeable difference. Why just noticeable difference? Basically, these patients have poor visual acuity. Now, the poorer is the visual acuity, poorer will be the acceptance to or, uh, or the viewing or the acceptance of your uh, powers. Basically, the lesser power, if you if you go with the point, uh, if a point, point to point, point to five steps, usually what we do in our in our clinic, the patient will not be able to identify a noticeable difference. Okay, and it will be frustrating even to the uh, even to the practitioner who is uh, who is trying to correct the patient by giving them point to five or point five steps. So it is recommended to correct them to increase the power in the trial frame with a higher values like plus one and above. So now there's a factor which is called as just noticeable difference. So just noticeable difference power is determining determined by just taking a denominator of the 20th, 20, 20 feet Snell and acuity and dividing it by 100. So suppose the patient has a visual acuity of 20 by 200. You need to take the 200 and divide it by 100 and you get a value of 2 diopters. Therefore, you would start your subjective refraction with plus or minus one diopter. So now here the catch is you need not, you may not give a, get a clearer one line, uh, you know, one line visual acuity. If you put plus one and the patient will be seeing, will, will be seeing an additional line. No, this will not happen in this case. If you put a plus one, you need to ask the patient at various distance, maybe uh, it is not clear at six meter, you Take the chart and make, bring it closer at three meter or so and ask whether the patient is uh, seeing it clear or he or she is seeing it blur. So just noticeable difference is that. So suppose with plus one power, they say it is blur. You are not going to use it again. You try and use a minus lens, minus one power. And if the patient says, yes, this is clearer, you increase the minus power until there is an improvement. Okay. This is a factor of just noticeable difference. It is basically to, man to maximize the clarity and the functionality of these patients. After the best corrected visual acuity has been achieved, there are battery of tests conducted on these patients 
they are Amsler's grid testing, color vision testing, glare testing, visual field testing, contrast sensitivity. Now, Amsler's test is to determine the central field photo mass, the central field effects. So, Amsler's is a very good tool to understand the central field effect. Then we have Ishihara chart or D15 chart to understand the color vision deficiency. And glare testing is done with the help of a glare testing instrument where there is an artificial induced glare, is, uh, there is a glare induced and the visual acuity is noted in uh, induced glare condition. So this helps actually to understand how much sensitive to light the customer or the patient case uh, is. So now we move on to from glare testing. Now that we have uh, taken note of uh, central field effect, color vision, glare, we move forward and understand about the contrast sensitivity function test. Contrast sensitivity is very important assessment in low vision patient. Why? So if you can see in this image, a naturally 100% of good contrast uh, image where detailing of the objects are seen, whereas in low contrast, the contrast in reduced contrast, the details are not seen. So this happens even in, for, even in low vision cases. So generally, the Snellen chart what we use in our clinic has 100% contrast. So these patients may not have 100%. These patients may have a good quantification of vision or 100% contrast chart, but may have poor contrast sensitivity function. Now, how to assess uh, assess these uh, patient? Uh, how to assess contrast sensitivity function is by using several instruments or several charts. The commonly used is Peliropsin, Vistec chart, functional acuity contrast test chart, Brigham type, and 100% and 10% uh, low contrast chart from Belly Lovey. The most common one is the Peliropsin chart, wherein there is uh, the triplet of letters uh, are used in reducing contrast format, and the threshold of contrast sensitivity function is achieved. Followed by visual field testing. A lot of low vision patients you would see, uh, most of them will have some kind of visual field restriction. Some people, some patients will get you a home free visual field analyzer report and some may not. It is understand, it is important to understand the usable visual field what the patient has. So there are various techniques to do it. Uh, the first one, what we use in the low vision clinics are tangent screen. Then we have Berkeley Central Visual Field Tester. Confrontation hand disk parameter. Commonly and without any instruments, what we can use in our clinic is confrontation, which is done at one meter. Now, now that we have done the assessment, after the assessment, it is important to provide low vision customers, or low vision patients, low vision aid. So what is low vision aid? It is an optical or a non-optical device that improves or enhances residual vision by magnifying the image of the object at the retinal level. How to achieve this magnification? So magnification is nothing but a ratio of size of the image formed by the lens to the size of the original object. There are four ways of creating magnification. They are relative size magnification, relative distance magnification, angular magnification, and projection magnification. So relative size magnification, what is relative size magnification? It's basically any activity of daily living in which the object being viewed can be made larger in size. Example, larger print textbooks. Uh, I'm giving, I've given an example of Oxford larger print dictionary or digest. Then relative distance magnification, any activity of daily living in which the distance between the object and the viewer can be reduced. Example, moving closer to the television. Then we have angular magnification, which is achieved with the help of an optical system. So use of an optical system between the eye and the object, which makes the object appear closer to you and larger, and larger is called, is, is called angular magnification. Example, use of a telescope to see a distance object. Then projection magnification. Enlargement of object projected on the screen. Example, CCTV. This gives you a real image of an object. Now that we have understood, there, there are different ways to achieve the magnification. Let us understand some calculation of it. So the calculation factor for magnification required for distance is uh, the formula usually uses the magnification required is equal to required visual acuity to 
to present visual acuity. It is basically a division of required visual acuity divided by the present visual acuity. Now I've given an example of watching television and reading bus numbers. So suppose, uh, you know, for different activities, you require a different visual acuity. Six by six is not a threshold for every patient. So suppose a patient who is old in age and wants to view television, which is which which he requires only uh, six by eighteen as a visual acuity, not six by six. So we are going to correct him for six by eighteen and not six by six. I suppose a patient requires to want to read the bus numbers, which uh, which requires a visual acuity of six by six. We will correct that patient for six by six and not six by eighteen. So suppose we need to improve the visual acuity from six by sixty to six by six. The magnification required we use uh, the, we we actually use the formula here that is the required visual acuity to the present visual acuity that is for, to make it very very simple denominator of your presenting visual acuity to the denominator of your required visual acuity we get a magnification that is 10x in this case so the patient to view distance object clearly or the desired distance object which he requires to view the bus numbers requires a 10x magnification for distance remember this is the starting value followed by the magnification calculation for near there are many magnification calculation used for near however i am going to show you the predicted add formula by kestenbaum so it is basically the reciprocal of the best corrected visual acuity for distance so the best corrected visual acuity for distance is 20 by 200. So you have to just reciprocate it and you get a value of plus 10. So plus 10 diopter is the predicted add which a patient has to use to view an object for near. Obviously, the addition will always go hand in hand with the working distance. So for a plus 10 diopter, he, the patient will require a 10 centimeter working distance. So the magnification formula used for near is ratio of presenting visual acuity divided by the required visual acuity in n notations so suppose a patient reads an n48 font with the best correction possible but wants to read n6 font so you divide n48 by n6 which gives you a magnification of 8x he'll require eight times more magnification to read the n6 font remember one time magnification is equal to four diopter. Therefore, the eight, eight times magnification will be equal to 32 diopters. So now that we have calculated the required magnification for distance, required magnification for near, we need to now understand the selection of low vision aid. So once the value of magnification required has been predicted, Find the best way to obtain the suitable low vision aid. Remember, we have four options at our disposable, disposal. So to make the object size bigger by relative size magnification, decrease the working distance by relative distance magnification, increase the overall angular magnification with an optical aid, and real image magnification using the projection magnification, like in CCTV low vision aid what you can prescribe to your patient so types are basically optical and non-optical optical include distance optical device and your optical device for distance optical device mostly the device used is telescope and there are types of telescope like bioptic telescope binoculars full field spectacle telescope handheld telescope and ctv let us try and understand each what is a bioptic telescope Bioptic telescope is a combination of two lens system or two optical system. So basically, here a telescope is attached to a pair of eyeglasses. The telescope is placed on the eyeglass lens just above one's normal sight, line of sight. So if you can see, here the patient is trying to look through the carrier. The carrier portion is the non-telescopic region. And now the patient is trying to reach, uh, look through the telescopic portion of the bioptic lens. The bioptic lens are also used for driving purposes. Then we have handheld telescope, which is the most commonly prescribed telescope in low vision practice. The monocular handheld telescope can be particularly useful to see the details in distance and closer focus. It's, uh, it has a variable focusing ability. 
such as locating an object, street signs, houses, and bus numbers. Magnification available in handheld telescope is 4x to 10x. Then we have something called a spectacle model telescope or CTV. CTV is a word itself tells you it helps. Uh, it's it's used for watching or seeing television. So basically, it is a glasses which focus on objects from 10 feet to infinity. So basically, it is used for 2 meter to 3 meter distance. The CTV glasses are specifically specially designed for watching television. These are hands-free mounted glasses and provide magnification up till 2.1x. So now that we know the devices available for distance, let us understand the devices for near. So there are various variable various devices available for near, and you can select from the categories. So they are spectacle magnifiers, scan magnifiers, handheld magnifier, dome magnifier, Fresnel book magnifiers, and pocket magnifiers. So spectacle magnifiers, as you can see, these are Spectacle magnifier, these are high plus lenses available in the power from plus 5 diopter up to 24 to 28 diopters. It has a wider field of view and most comfortable for continuous reading tasks. It is mostly given to, uh, you know, to patients who have, uh, who, who wants uh, particularly to read continuously for children and for elderly population. So, but here the disadvantage is you have to use a combination of approach magnification that you need to go a little closer to achieve the focus for the focal point of this and to get a clearest vision. Stand magnifiers. Now stand magnifiers are in different types. You get in uh, adjust, uh, you get in uh, illuminated form, in the non-illuminated form. If you can see in this image, there's a cutaway stand magnifier. This cutaway does not require an illumination system, uh, a separate illumination system. This cut allows the light to enter through the telescope and that's uh, through the magnifier. And that's how a patient is able to view things. It, it has a fixed focus distance, fixed focal length. Uh, similarly, it, it is also available in self illumination. As you can see, it has a fixed focus and it can be used for continuous reading and it can be given for given to patients who do not have hand travel. It, it can be given to all elderly patients uh, because it, we do not have to continuously hold the device in the in this case. It stays where it is kept. Then followed by handheld magnifier. So handheld magnifiers are basically magnifiers used for spotting activities. It has two systems it is available in illuminated form and non-illuminated form form it has a self-illuminating system altogether then we have dome magnifiers dome magnifiers are, uh, are available in different diameters and it can be used in uh, for continuous reading specifically uh, specifically given to children for their daily uh, reading purpose and school reading purpose then we have Fresnel sheet magnifiers. These are sheet of papers, sheet of magnifiers, which can be used uh, for reading purpose, for spot reading purpose. And uh, you know, it, because it has a wider field, it can be used for continuous reading also. Then we have something called as pocket magnifier. Pocket magnifier itself, the name itself tells you that it can be used. It is a very portable one and you can keep put it in your pocket and carry it anywhere. It is used for spotting, uh, spotting activities uh, such as if you want to go to the market and uh, the patient wants to read out the product details, it can just remove it from the pocket and read out the pro product details, followed by, uh, you know, bus, uh, followed by the mobile phone reading, uh, you know, the messages uh, can be read on the mobile phone by this device. It also has a self illumination system. Uh, so these are very handy device, I must say. And, for, and after, uh, we, these are the range of uh, near magnifiers what we have. And uh, you can select from the range, and as per the uh, as per the power, you can select uh, various power availability and various magnifications are available in these in, in uh, near magnifiers, basically near magnification devices. So now, as we have some uh, devices for distance, some devices for near. There are few devices which can be used as an assistive technology and which can be used for near reading, for intermediate work, and even for distance. So these are called as portable video magnifiers or assistive devices. So the categories are video magnifiers, portable ones, 
mouse model CCTV, desktop CCTV, and reader devices. So the portable CCTV devices are as follows. If you can see on the screen, it is it is you it is like a phone. Basically, it's it's like a phone. It has a camera. It has a screen. It has a screen which views the object of interest. But what is what does it additionally do? It enlarges the object. It changes the contrast. It changes the font size. So basically, it helps the low vision read read it uh, read all the small text without disturbing their feet, without without having eye strain or trouble. And it is very handy and very easy to use. Uh, the patient is able to view the things clearly on the screen. It can also change the color contrast, like black on white, white on black, black background, red on yellow, or something like that, whichever suits the patient's vision. Then we have something called as multi-purpose video magnifier. I call it as a multi-purpose video magnifier. This is, basically, it is also called as zoom max handle magnifier. So this is why it is called multi-purpose. This has a variable focusing ability as near as well as intermediate and as well as distance. So basically, it can help you read. It can help you change the contrast. And the magnification, can, which can be reached, is up to 25x, 25 times more. Also, it, it, it helps in viewing things for distance. So it, it can be used uh, in the classroom by, by students also. So this is very handy and very good. Video magnifiers are a boon to low vision care, I must say. Then we have something called as mouse model. Mouse model is very handy. So this the mouse has a camera inbuilt below it. And these buttons help to increase the font, decrease the font, change the contrast as you can see in the screen this is very small but you'll be able to see as you can see on the screen that there uh, the you just have to attach these mouse uh, uh, model on your laptop desktop led te uh, television on uh, in your house you just need to attach it view the object of interest below it scroll through it and the object will be screened on the monitor or a monitor of your choice so this is very good tool then we have a very old desktop magnifier. So if you can see, this also has a camera, as a camera, a monitor screen. The sheet has to be kept below the camera. The, the object of interest of reading has to be kept below the camera, wherein it magnifies and projects it on the screen. These all video magnifiers use projection magnification. It can change the contrast. It can increase or decrease the font. But the disadvantage of this desktop CCTV is basically it is very bulky to carry uh, bulky. So it cannot be carried and it is not very portable. So now that we know there are assistive technologies available and which is a boon to this boon to low vision care. However, optical devices are incomplete with without a non-optical device. So if you see a non-optical device or also called as functional adaptive devices. So these go hand in hand with the optical devices. What do they actually do? They help enhance the functionality of your optical device. So how do they do it? I, I told you in the earlier slides that the low vision patients do have contrast difficulty, difficulty in identification of currency nodes and points, so basically, there are there are devices available to correct it. How do we do it? So the first thing is no tax currency identification. So if you can see, this is a black uh, sheet like or a cardboard or a leather sheet like uh, sheet like paper, which is cut in different sizes according to the size of the note. Suppose it is ten rupees note, twenty rupees note, fifty, and so on. And it helps with the textile tactile sense. It helps the low vision individual to identify the various currency nodes. Then we have letter writer guide. So what does letter writer guide usually do? In these low vision patients, uh, especially the children, do have difficulty writing in the straight line. So how do we overcome them? So these letter writer guides have compartment wherein they can feel the lines between lines in between with that hands you know that there's a tactile sense which helps them to write in, in a straight line then we have something called a signature guide 
it's like a small cardboard atm uh, size paper which is cut in the center for signature for doing a signature in the center lot of uh, lot of low vision patients uh, in the elderly age group have uh, been complaining uh, i have found that you know they they do have difficulty in signing on the important on the important documents because they are unable to guess where to sign and what to do and they have made a lot of mistakes so this solves their problem jo followed by a typoscope the typoscope is something uh, again uh, you know it's like a black uh, you know it's it's like a black cardboard paper with an opening in the center which cuts out the unwanted glare helps to enhance the contrast and helps in reading uh, reading uh, helps in uh, reading so basically what happens here is a lot of children in low vision low vision children do have difficulties do complain that they are missing out lines in between even the others do complain this solves their problem you just focus on the line which you are reading and so on then you have something called as reading stand i showed you spectacle magnifiers where the patient has to go a little closer to the object of interest to view it clearly now here and because of which they might have some kind of neck ache neck ache or back ache or something so here they have an adjustable reading stand which brings the object of interest closer to the eye and focuses on the focal and closer to the eye and is and the patient will be able to view the object clearly without having any kind of uh, trouble like uh, any kind of kind, uh, neck ache back ache uh, without you know having to go closer to the object then contrast enhancement also can be achieved by something as simple as giving them extra light you would have seen that in dim light you uh, even a normal sighted patient will have a normal sighted person will have difficulty reading stuff but uh, uh, just imagine about these low vision people they ha they have glare issues they have contrast issues so the extra light which you can give it to them by with the help of reading lamp or just natural sunlight it enhances their contrast and enables them to read it clearly then you have something called as large printed textbook newspaper i showed you large print digest oxford dictionary now this is something which is very good for low vision patient to read out news uh, many patients do complain about reading difficulty reading difficulties uh, like especially reading newspaper so now they don't have to worry we do have something called as large printed newspapers in their disposable disposal then for their daily living activities for enhancement of contrast uh, we do have uh, you know certain uh, other assistive technology or uh, uh, non optical devices or what we say you know i i showed you in in the previous in earlier slides that homemakers do have difficulty sewing you know they do have difficulty putting the thread in the needle so a very good tool that is automatic sewing device can be used for their for for their functionality there uh, like you know, it is available on amazon and uh, and it is not very costly so it, it helps them uh, with their needling work then uh, if you can see in this image there is a poor contrast i, I told you earlier uh, that these people might have problem while climbing up and down the stairs so why do have the why do these people have problem because they are unable to judge the stairs because of the poor contrast what we have to do to make it better for for helping them to climb up and down the stairs you just have to paint the edges of the stairs by painting the edges of the stairs you are enabling them to walk and understanding and uh, to enabling them to climb up and down the stairs also they will understand where the edge is are and they will not fall lastly the kitchen contrast uh, i told you that these patients do have difficulty identifying food on the food plate so if you see see in this image a white rice on a white plate it will be really really difficult for a poor contrast patient to understand where the rice is rice is or whether the food the plate does has rice or no so mostly many patients do complain that they guess the food and eat they do not know what is there in the plate so solving their problem we need to give them higher contrast against the background so simply just give them a 100% contrast object like a black bowl and a white rice so it is easy to identify the rice in the bowl likewise in the kitchen 
if you see the first image you see merging of the objects to the background so we enhance the contrast by giving them a good contrast object suppose for example for drinking milk you use because milk is white in color you use a black cup for drinking coffee which is in black in color you can use a white cup altogether so that's how you enhance the overall contrast in the kitchen in the working environment and in the house environment so these are basically some optical aids non optical aids what we can give it to our or prescribe to our low vision patient now many patients do come to me and ask about the software assistance so we i am going to talk a little on software assistance uh, we do have screen magnifiers and we do have screen magnifiers so what what happens here a lot of patients uh, you know a lot of patients who work basically on the screen do have difficulties viewing things on the screen they have to really go closer or they uh, some of them have even stopped working on the screen and some of them even have given up on their job so what we what we do for them so don't worry we do have screen magnifiers for them so these are the screen magnifiers available first is the video window magnifier it is an inbuilt software in the windows application wherein we have to just go to the magnifier option select the magnification required and it will enlarge the portion of the screen what we need to view then we have zoom text magnifier or reader zoom text magnifier is an application which magnifies the entire uh, entire screen and helps you read better and work on the screen so basically the magnification reach is up to 2.5x then we have something called as magic magic magnification magic is basically a magnification software which has to be installed on your computer it is a paid application though but it helps a person to view things clearly it also has it also has reading uh, reader or you know the speech it helps enable a person to understand what they're doing on the screen basically so some of the applications which i have shared i have also given the link uh, if possible i will share the link with all of you uh forward uh, going forward we do have other magnifiers uh, for screen magnifiers like supernova magnifier dolphin guide supernova magnifier it's a it's a dolphin guide basically it's an application where which installed on the screen it allows you to magnify object reverse contrast also uh, you know you can work on the contrast which you feel the best uh, best of uh, i'll tell you the simple technique you, you know to for enhancing the contrast we usually work on the white background just uh, you know just tell them just give your uh, low vision patient uh, you do just advise them to inverse to reverse uh, to inverse the contrast and that application is available on the windows also and in these screen magnifiers inversing the contrast do help them uh, uh, with their contrast enhancement and also reducing the glare amount of glare they face then we have something called screen readers usually this is for visually impaired and blind people it really helps them when you uh, we have window narrator on our windows uh, desktop which is inbuilt we just have to select the narrator and it will narrate and it will tell you what we are working on suppose we have clicked on the exit button or we we want to recycle something it will it will it will loudly tell the patient it is recycling or it is saving or whatever they are, whatever work you are doing then we have something called as job access with speech job software which which has to be installed in the computer which helps in again uh, helps with the speech uh, it helps the visually impaired people then we have non visual desktop a blind can use this uh, non visual desktop application it is completely free of cost uh after the uh, software applications we do have some mobility assisted devices so mobility assisted devices do include canes sighted guides like dog and human guide so so basically canes uh there are various canes available vibrator canes a foldable canes then we have straight canes then we have a lot of canes available so canes basically are used uh, like a stick you know to move around and understand the obstacle while mo while moving around and that's how you uh, reduce the amount of bumps they have in their uh, in their life and specifically improve the quality of their mobility then we do have something called as dog guide dog guide also helps them navigating and helps to uh, identify any kind of obstacles in the environment 
and then we have a uh, human guide or sighted guide uh, okay where, wherein uh, a human is uh, all time escorting the individual and helping them with mobility however that is that uh, that makes the individual too dependent on that person on that person then a uh, lot of people do ask me about the useful applications which can be used by these low vision patients so i am going to talk and tell you about the five most important and most used applications for low vision and visually impaired people so first one is looktel looktel app, uh, application or looktel app is basically the money identifier mobile application looktel money identifier reader instantly recognizes currency and speaks the denomination enabling people experiencing visual impairments or blindness to quickly and easily identify and count bills so it makes the counting of bills and identification of the currency very easy then we have a, an award winning ebook reader which is called as care lp reader so care lp reader application is basically the, uh, which it's a virtually uh, it reads out virtually any text aloud so basically it is used um, it converts the printed text into high quality speech to provide accurate fast and efficient access to both single and multiple page documents with the tap of a button on the iphone it is also available in on android pc laptop desktop it can be it can be installed anywhere and it is completely free tap tap see so tap tap see is an application to identify objects through photos so this app is designed to help the blind and visually impaired and impaired to identify the objects they encounter in their daily lives simply double tap the screen and take a photo of anything at any angle and you will hear the app speak the identification back to you then we have color id free now that we know low vision patients do have some kind of color vision deficiency acquired or congenital so it discovers the name of the colors around you app uses the camera on your phone to speak the names of colors in the real time then be my eyes be my eyes is the application everyone has been talking about people helping people in real time so be the eyes for a blind person in need of help remotely through a live video connection if you are sighted or be assisted by the network of sighted users if you are blind you can volunteer in this application by being an assistant to somebody blind or if you have a visual impairment if you can suggest it for visually impaired people so that they have a real time person who can help them to identify object and talk to them so these are the few applications however there are many applications available and i can give you links of all of them later on now coming towards the end of low vision uh, care so a low vision walk up sheet looks something like this too much of information too much of complications you might feel so let me make you make it very simple for you so how do you care about these patient at primary level what you do there so basically a correct refraction a great retinoscopy skill will solve half of your problem trust me so a correct refraction is required a correct prescription should be given many time for near vision near addition we restrict ourselves to plus 2.5 to 3 don't we but for somebody who really requires a additional lenses may may benefit from by giving them maximum potential reading ad like plus 3.5 or 4 the maximum maximum ad which you can give to a low vision patient is up till plus 4 in the glasses i also suggest to make separate pair of glasses for distance and near avoid giving them bifocals or progressives because of the field restrictions then you can also start using ampsless test chart in your clinic and it is not very expensive this is to determine any kind of uh, scotoma for in center any kind of central field defect so basically it is just uh, you know it will not take much of your time you just use it in your clinic and evaluate and then you can refer these patients if required uh, you can also use ishihara chart in your clinic i have seen 
this chart available in almost 90% of the optometric clinics. So you can use this to identify any kind of color vision deficiency. Then if you find the person has some kind of field restriction, confrontation test can be done in your setup. This doesn't require any instrument as such. Then uh, you can also suggest to, uh, for, to these patients to use extra light for reading contrast enhancement at, in their houses, approach magnification, going closer to the object of interest, like they can go close to the television, to reading material, and which magnif which will help them read that, uh, ident uh, reading, which will, which will eventually help them reading comfortably or not comfortable as such, but yes, to read out the objects, to read out the reading material, basically. Then we have, we can also provide them with filters or tinted lenses so this will help in enhancing their contrast also it will help control clear we can also suggest them to use broad beam torch light uh, mostly for people with having night vision uh, difficulty in navigating at night decreased vision in night or night blindness or something they can actually carry the broad beam torch in their pocket for navigating in dim light or during night time. And specifically referring them to an expert like a low vision specialist or an ophthalmologist if required. Uh, I have, I actually, I tried to found, uh, find out, actually I tried to find out uh, a lot of uh, low vision centers across globe. However, I was able to find uh, uh, some of them uh, yeah, across uh, specifically uh, i belong to india so i have uh, the, these are the list of uh, institutes uh, where low vision is uh, practiced and tertiary care is given to these low vision patients so basically lv prasad institute in hyderabad india shankar netralaya in india lotus college of optometry mumbai india national association of blindness in india braille institute in los angeles america malaysian association for blindness and also, uh, you can recruit. I have mentioned your Karishma Enterprise. Uh, for me to mention this name here is basically these. Uh, this is the uh, organization or a company which provides video magnifiers, and it also exports throughout the world. And it is very, very, very uh, cost effective. So, uh, if you can find out about them, uh, it is uh, handled by Mr. Agarwal, who is himself a blind person. So. Uh, for knowing more institutes, you can approach to your um, your own uh, institutions where you've done your optometry. I'm uh, I I must say that they might have uh, you know some kind of low vision uh, center where you know uh, the low vision aid can be recruited from. LV Prasad I know specifically do provide does provide uh, low vision instruments and even uh, low vision instrument for low vision setup. Shankar Netrale. Then uh, we also have, uh, in India, we also have Balival and Homi, which also provides you low vision aid uh, instrument for setting up a low vision center. So, base, uh, so these are my, uh, uh, see, these are the basic uh, centers available. And um, thank you for patiently listening to me. And uh, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you, everyone. And I'm open for feedbacks and questions of any. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Neha, for a wonderful presentation. I think you have covered uh, a lot of information which is, uh, you know, beneficial for all our listeners today. So let's just take uh, some questions. There, there was one question I was reading just now. Uh, yeah. What's your opinion on prescribing devices like, for example, uh, uh, let's say there is a patient who has glaucoma as well as uh, retinitis pigmentosa. So both of them have similar kind of visual field uh, defects. Right? Yes. They have peripheral field defects for the first go. So does the same device work for them or how would you take it? Uh, okay, so basically uh, reverse telescope, you know, the same uh, telescope can be given to them. Uh, uh, it's a very good question, first of all. Um, uh, for a field defect, uh, I have uh, actually tried. Uh, uh, so for a field defect, basically, we can give them telescopes. So now how to give them these telescopes? So this, that's a catch here. So monocular telescope, which actually helps us to view objects uh, by focusing at various levels. 
which can where, wherein the objective and eyepiece is defined if you reverse it okay the reverse telescope if you just flip it it becomes a field expander so this can be given then secondly the for field expand uh, expansion uh, we can also give them a prism fresnel prism cut out panel fresnel prism or 48 prism diopter base out wherein you know the uh, the fresnel uh, the fresnel sheet is cut into two uh, two different uh, uh, it's a it's cut into small portions which is ticked on the lenses and which uh, helps in navigating and improve improving the overall feel so these are the two things which uh, uh, which you can prescribe uh, or suggest to for peripheral field defect patients specifically okay but this is also okay. called as uh, i must want to uh, add on to this these fresnel sheet what i've told you these are called as ali peli prisms so basically if you go and uh, search about it you will get more information okay and uh, what kind of devices will have hmd patients uh, where, because they have central scotoma Yes. Uh, so for central scotoma, it is very much essential to uh, use the peripheral retinal portion. So we know that macula is affected, the fovea is uh, affected, the central field is uh, has a problem. But there is uh, there is a residual part of your retina which is active and which is good. That is your peripheral vision. So there is a technique. Uh, you know, there is a uh, eccentric viewing can be used. You know, you try to understand which is the best. Uh, you know try to move around the text and which is the portion of the retina which the patient might want or uh, might get a clearest vision from and that place that eccentric viewing technique can be used to view objects in these cases okay mm -hmm. uh, eccentric viewing uh, training has been given uh, uh, training can be given to these patients eccentric eccentric fixation um, uh, training eccentric viewing training can be given to these patients in order to view and use their potential peripheral uh, retinal vision okay. yeah and yeah. how does vision rehabilitation help in low vision okay so it's very good um, i actually i covered a lot uh, and, and i do not touch rehabilitation so rehabilitation basically includes um, your uh, training of all the devices which which you have prescribed to the patient. So like if you have something called as uh, you know monocular telescope, if you have given, so you you require training on how to use them, reviving them basically. You know how how you are going to utilize these instruments and how you are going to lead a independent life rehabilitation basically relates to that so it includes training it includes counseling it uh, includes uh, includes a lot of rehabilitative uh, process mm -hmm. like uh, uh, like uh, like giving them motivation and also helping them out in their uh, you know in their task like mobility there are different it's, it's a very big uh, huge concept of rehabilitation but basically i will try to uh, concise it into um, training for the low vision aids like optical and non optical counseling these patients and motivating them uh, them and counseling the counterparts of these patients like the uh, family members and so on. yeah that's right and i i think we could add on here is uh, it's not only always vision rehabilitation patients would require you know referrals to other counterparts such as occupational therapists and all that that would be another kind of uh, rehabilitation as well which would help low vision right yeah yes yeah, yes so, uh, psychologists yeah. occupational therapist we can refer them yes so they will require probably a psychologist or uh, you know somebody to look after them and that is also a part of rehabilitation but uh, is not vision rehabilitation but uh, it is also i mean important uh, what kind of, uh, sorry come again yeah, yeah continue yeah so uh, what do you think is the reason uh, why low vision is not much developed in india um, so i have actually noted down uh, i have uh, noted down the barriers in low vision uh, the survey itself says that a lot of people are not aware of this uh, uh, you know uh, of this uh, subject altogether uh, specifically you know sometimes also uh, comes in the mind you know low vision matlab, uh, low, me the meaning of low vision means uh, time consuming depressive not so profitable also you know in india particularly uh, we have uh, 
we have a you know we have very few optometrists who are practicing low vision a very few centers who are available i can i can count them on your on our fingers so we need to expand these so basically these are the uh, these are the main reasons why it is not developed in india so much yeah awareness and availability probably yeah okay. that's the very rightly said uh what type of low vision devices would you advise patients with albinism okay so albinism is a condition where they have a lot of sensitivity to light and photophobic photophobia so basically uh, simple tools uh, sub, uh, so they their vision so for albinism um, you know they do not have uh, they never have a very less vision they do have a moderate visual acuity 6 by 18 or so so for these patients uh, correcting their uh, their symptoms like correcting their a uh, lot of uh, sensitivity to light is very important so basically we use uh, we can give them uh, hats visors umbrella that's the basic things we can give them filters like tinted lenses uh, study says that we need to give them a uh, pink filters or red filters really work for low vision patient so we can give them uh, you know functional adaptive devices as such filters uh, uh, and overall to uh, overall to help them out we can advise them to wear full uh, full sleeves clothes like fully covered clothes uh, fully covered clothes and uh, uh, even the uh, fully covered clothes apply sunscreen and all these so albinism patients can be provided with a lot of uh, you know lot of assistive devices and i have seen a lot of uh, low vision patients uh, albinism albinism patients uh, do complete the education very nicely by using the portable video magnifiers so you can suggest them uh, video magnifiers the telescope you can give them uh, functional adaptive devices like filters tinted lenses to correct uh, to correct the photophobic sensation and other than that they can be also advised to wear full clothes apply sunscreen as so yeah very rightly said and uh, uh, there's two questions which i think relate to each other what do you think is the importance of braille uh, learning in low vision patients and uh, if a patient is an illiterate and he's you know a sell, uh, is a seller selling things is a vendor so mm. how would you actually help these low vision patients do you think braille would help them or do you have any alternatives to those kind of illiterate patients okay so uh, very very nice questions and um, uh, so basically uh, for these illiterate people i'll start with the illiterate question first so a okay. uh, illiterate person uh, has some potential vision right so now there are associations which which helps reviving these illiterate people to do some potential task so now what what they can do if if he is, he he or she is unable to read or write they can actually go and make some kind of uh you know uh, some kind of uh, craft they can actually do some kind of craft work sell something sit and do something so there are a lot of things which we which they can do and which we can help them uh, by sending them to an appropriate center where training has been given like in india specifically we have national association for blindness where these special trainings are given in making paper uh, plates you know and these uh, uh, these people learn to make paper plates and then sell it across so this this is how the income uh, you know they start getting um, you know get, getting uh, some job or start, start getting money out of it so basically we can address these uh, these people also so it is not only related to uh, you know the literacy we can uh, address these illiterate people as well second question about the braille okay illiterate and braille um, you know anybody in the world can learn braille so but braille is specifically designed for blind people so braille uh, there are braille uh, there are braille learning institutes uh, where where in the blind schools where the braille uh, teaching is done they they learn through their tactile sense they learn through auditory sense you know by listening to a lot of things so yes blind people can avail the benefits of braille an illiterate low vision person who has some potential vision can be uh, directed to a specific center where a specific training can be given to these people yeah that's right and let's take one last question uh, do any tints or filters help with people who have color vision defects or deficiencies what's your experience on that yes uh, so i have not mentioned that in my ppt but yes 
we do have x chrome lenses uh, special specialized contact lenses which can be uh, uh, which can be given to these uh, low vision uh, color uh, vision deficit people the tints which can be used is like uh, the red tints uh, basically or which can enhance uh, the hue of uh, red color or you know the 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 color deficient part so yes uh, tints can be given x chrome lenses can be prescribed to these uh, color vision deficient people okay thank you very much neha i think there was one uh, good comment uh, for the attendees that there is one low vision center uh, rehab center uh, in korom mall which is located in thane which is also handled by low vision patients itself so uh, probably people who are in and around that area could actually uh, avail their facilities uh, you know there was one comment on the chat so i just thought we will read it out so thank you very much again thank neha you. for giving us uh, a very uh, detailed and a very insightful talk about you know low vision this is a part of optometry i think which is very less practiced to my experience and yeah. uh, and at the same time it has a good uh, huge potential in terms of uh, personal satisfaction so uh, i i'm not sure how many of the attendees here practice is low vision uh but those who practice would definitely agree that you know when when you have a smiling patient walking out of your practice walking out of your clinic when you give them a specific low vision device or any uh, advice for that matter i mean that's yeah. the satisfaction you would uh, you would get i think uh, that's more important uh, sometimes uh, monetary is not always important but uh, these kind of things are also really important and we as clinical optometrists have the expertise so Uh, yeah. there was one good interesting uh, comment when we asked the question about what comes to your mind uh, you know when we hear the word low vision so somebody said that uh, comes to my mind on using my expertise to evaluate the eye so i mean th uh, that kind of thought should be there an optometrist should be practicing low vision and should not neglect that so thank you uh, thank you very much again for uh, passing the message across very clearly and i hope uh, people would benefit and start doing their bits of low vision in their pr uh, private or personal practices and uh, uh, take it further from there and if there is a need they can refer to the tertiary centers which you have mentioned uh, in in your presentation thank you neha thank you very much Since we do have sessions lined up so uh, until then stay home stay safe and see you all again next week Bye